Hello everyone, my name is Viraj and today we'll be looking at the 31st problem from the CP31 sheet by TLA eliminators under the 900 rated questions. Okay, let's go. So move on to my CP31 sheet, take off 900 rated parameter and the 31st problem multiply by 2 divide by 6. Okay, let's open this up. So you are given an integer n. In one move, you can either multiply n by 2 or divide n by 6. That is, it is divisible by 6 without remainder. Your task is to find the minimum number of moves needed to obtain 1 from n or determine if it's impossible to do that. Okay, so you have to answer t independent test cases. That is what is given. Great, so let us try to generalize this problem. Very simple although, not a very harsh problem. All that we are starting off with is a number n. And then basically you are allowed two sorts of operations. One is multiply. So this is like multiply by two. And the other operation is divide by six. Okay, divide by six as a number. Now, of course, the condition in this is very, very obvious. It should be divisible by six. It should be, should be divisible by six to do this. All right, so divisible by six to do this. So either I multiply it by two or I divide by six, uh, knowing that it's divisible by six. These are the two number of, op these are two types of, sorry, types of operations that are allowed to me. Now, what are we trying to do is we are trying to turn this number of n to go to the number one. And to do that, of course, I'll be utilizing some number of operations. Let's call that number of operations as C. So I want to report the C value, of course, and this C value should be as low as possible. So it's given very clearly in the question, minimum number of moves or basically lowest C, that's the count of operations you require, moves you require, to actually convert n to 1. Okay, great. I hope this is clear. Let us see some test case and clearly understand what is given to us. So added to our normal cases, one more thing is very clear over here that it's not always possible to do this, right? It might not be always possible. That's why they have given you with this, this line in the output over here that if it's possible to do, then you print the minimum number of moves. And if it's not possible to do, then you will print a negative one. So negative one cases are not possible cases are also there. Okay, so I think we can discuss some cases, very simple cases, like let's say I'll pick up the first three cases. So let's see, we are talking about something like uh, the number one. So for a number one, you cannot have any more reduction to one. One of course is actually one only, we wanted one itself. So basically the answer for one as a number itself can be zero because there are no moves required by you to convert this number, it's already one. What about you have two? Now two preferably cannot be converted to one. That's why the number I print over here is negative one, which means impossible. This is an impossible case. And for three, very cleverly, the number of moves is actually two. How is it? For starting with three, you can actually multiply it with two. So this becomes six, and then you divide it by six, this becomes actually one. So you can see I have done two moves, one multiplication by two, then a division by six, and I get, basically get one, which means two moves are good to go. So this is like the first three answers that we have discussed. Now you can of course try this to do with your pen and paper on the other cases, but I think the last cases might be very big for you to manually check. That is where I think uh, we'll have to stop and actually start with the main uh, idea of the problem. How do we actually solve it? So I think the first two, three cases are enough to understand the crux. Okay, great. Now, before I actually start the idea with the problem, let us discuss what's the expected time complexity in this problem. How do I wish to solve this? And this is a very, very fun part. Okay, so now I know that one second basically allows me 10 power eight elementary operations. Right. And in this problem, one test is allowing me one second. So basically one test allows also 10 power eight elementary operations to perform. But every test has some number of test cases that is given by this variable T that's in two into 10 raised to four order, which is very high, which means if I calculate the number of operations for every test case, then I would be left with 10 power eight upon maximum in a test is two power two into 10 power four, which means one into 10 raised to four. By acute mathematics, this can be one into, sorry, five into 10 raised to three. Now, this is the number of operations I am allowed to perform for every test case. Now, this is very important because in a test case, there is this variable n for which I want to create a time complexity. Now, if I observe in the problem, n is given in 10 power nine order. Okay, so I'll write this, n is given in 10 power nine order. And 10 power nine order is actually very large. Why? Because if let's say you want to create something like an O of n solution, which is like standard solutions of how uh, these problems look like, I cannot do that in this problem because O of n would mean 10 power nine order and I'm only going to create solutions till five into 10 raised to three sort of an order in number of operations. This is not going to work. Of course, if this doesn't work, anything above this doesn't work, right? So if you create O of n square solutions and so on, so on, so on, that's not going to work. So that means we need even lesser than this. By preference, like by experience, we can also understand this, that if n is very, very large, or as in specifically in this orders of 10 per 8, 10 per 9 order, what we generally look for a solution is 
somewhere in log powers either we create a solution that looks like log n sort of something or we create solution that's pretty much constant so that is what is by experience solutions that are good to go for such high orders but solutions like o of n and o of n square and so on so on so on these doesn't work which means we are somewhat looking for a solution that has some mathematics or some bitwise manipulation involved because only such solutions can give you a solution that is works in constant time complexity or log powers of time complexity that is why this expected time complexity discussion is very very important because now this is helping me remove all the redundant ideas from the head and it is helping me i relay relate to this part that okay something like a bitwise something like a uh, constant something like a mathematics something like that is involved in this problem otherwise i won't be able to achieve the desired time complexities so that's good to go i won't create solutions that run in anything above that okay great now that i have been intuited towards that i need some sort of a maths in this of course i will start thinking this problem in terms of mathematics specifically in terms of what am i trying to do how is it affecting the number okay so let's try to observe this before we actually create some ideation first of all let's say you have give you have been given a number n then when you actually multiply this number by 2 then this number becomes n into 2 or if i say that this number basically is divided by 6 that is assumably it's fully divisible by 6 what happens over here is that let's say in this number n there is a factor of 6 okay factor of 6 then that 6 factor is removed of course it makes sense if you divide a number by 6 basically you are removing that okay from this n if you had a 6 multiplicative factor in this n remove that great good to go so you understand this or even better like on a broader picture if you understand this n has let's say if i dissolve out n in the factors Uh, or specifically prime factors then n can be represented as something like let's say p1 factor okay p1 factor and with the power of a1 then you can have a prime factor p2 of the power a2 so on so on so on so on right and now if you say n is multiplied by 2 you basically introduce a prime factor 2 into this and if you say it's divided by 6 you try to remove the factor specifically the prime factors 2 and 3 together as a pair from this n by 2 and 3 because 6 effectively is actually by prime factorization written as 2 into 3 so if you divide it by 6 you are effectively trying to remove 1 2 from n and 1 3 from n okay now i hope this is clear so i'll just write this down we add a prime factor 2 in operation 1 and we remove a prime factor 2 and 3 in operation 2 okay so i hope this observation is clear now understand this that n right now is a number that's not 1 we want to make it 1 that means we want to take it from a higher number to a lower number because one is lower now if i want to take something to high to low i am basically preferring that i remove yes because if i multiply then it only makes the number go larger if i remove some factors then only the number is going to come down 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 so on to preferably one right makes sense great so now the power that is given to you to remove from n is only limited to removing a prime factor of 2 and 3 what does that mean this helps me identify the negative one cases because it's not necessary that n is made up of only twos and threes right maybe n is a number which has all different prime factors coming into it right you maybe have a prime factor 5 you have a prime factor 11 you have a prime factor 7 it can be a number which has more prime factors besides 2 and 3 but you only have the power to remove the prime factor 2 and 3 collectively and only 2 and 3 specifically right now from n if i say that n has a prime factor 5 let's say n was a number 15 basically 15 means 3 into 5 so maybe you are able to remove this 3 but can you remove this 5 there is nothing that is allowing you to remove this 5 which means negative one cases can be created from a very simple ideation that if n has prime factors other than 2 and 3 then the answer is negative 1 this is very very clear i hope this should be simple now if we have covered the cases where i say n is a number that contains only 2 and 3 what sort of n can look like let's say n is looking like something like 2 power a into 3 power b let's say n looks like right now in this no other prime factor exists in this like 5 7 11 it doesn't exist you have so on doesn't exist you only have 2 and 3s in this number n 
Now understand this, that to remove a three, basically you want n to go to one, right? So you obviously don't want this two n threes also to exist, just that right now it has two n three. So it's, it's maybe it's still reducible since you don't have any other five, seven, so on. But right now we want to make it one. So we want to remove these two and three also. Now come back. Removal is applicable for three. It's also applicable for two, but it's more applicable for three. Why? Because if I want to remove this three, I am also forced to remove a two, correct? Because if I remove three, I am not exactly removing three, I am removing six, which also makes me remove a two. So that means if I remove three, I will also be removing a two. So let's say that the number of A's that I have, so the number of twos that I have written is A is actually greater than B. And then the other case can be that A is less than equal to B. Why am I making these cases? Understand this. When A is greater than B, that means the number of twos are larger than three. Maybe, for example, maybe let's say you had four twos and let's say you only had three threes. Now, if I remove a three, I will have to remove a two. Great. I'll remove a three. This becomes two. This becomes three because now I've reduced a two and a three. Now this becomes one. This becomes two because I remove one more three and two as a pair. This becomes zero and this becomes one. Great. You have removed all threes, but you're still left with one, two or basically more twos because that's obvious. Threes were less in count. So can you now remove this two? Come back to your operations you have nothing in power to remove a simple two. If you want to remove a two, you also need a three with it and vice versa because they both come in pairs. That means if I am left with more twos at the end, I can never remove them. This is a problem. And this is why A greater than B also creates a negative one case on top of what we discussed previously. That is if you have anything besides two and three also is negative one. Added to that, even after being exactly two and threes in N, comprising of only two and threes in N, you can still receive a negative one case if number of twos are greater than three. By a simple commonsensical logic, that twos being more in count, at the very end will be left over. Nothing in power is there with you to remove those twos. But things are kind of in our uh, ball when we say that A is less than equal to B. Why? Because now, if let's say you have lower number of twos than threes, what we can do is simply use the operation count, sorry, operation number one, that is multiply two into the n number. What will that make me do? Let's say a was equal to four and let's say b was equal to six. So you have four twos, you have six threes. So you're basically short by two twos to pair up with every three. Great. Just use operation number one two times and you will effectively make a go to value of six because you will multiply two twos more in the number. And now since you have equal number of A and B, you can simply reduce them together parallelly by using operation two. How many number of times? Six number of times. And now all the twos and all the threes will be removed, effectively making this number reach one. Now remember, we are not removing twos and threes. When I say removing twos and threes, that basically means you'll be dividing by six, then six, then six, then and so on. So basically dividing by six removes twos and threes. Okay, so this is actually our idea. Now I'll try to club everything up. What will be our main final idea? Idea will start with, basically it will be like three cases. If N has anything besides two and three, answer is negative one, okay? If A twos is greater than B number of threes, then also answer is negative one, okay? Answer is negative one. And what about the other thing? If A twos is less than equal to B threes, then what's the answer? The answer is actually, so whatever is the shortage of twos, first you will cover that. How do I calculate that? B minus A. Why B minus A? Because if A is less than equal to B, then it basically means that B minus A is the difference of number of twos, which you want more. So you will use operation one, type one, to cover those twos and then you will simultaneously reduce how many twos and threes together, B number of twos and threes together by using operation two, effectively meaning that you will be dividing by six. So that's removing two and three together. Okay, and this becomes my answer. So this is the answer, this is the answer, and this is the answer for one, two, and three cases. Great, so I hope you understand the problem. 
very clever problem right definitely requires some mathematics now if we try to understand what sort of a time complexity would be achieving in this it would be very very quick why because all i want to calculate are factors in this so i would be like factorizing this part even in the very bigger deal i don't need to factorize this in terms of all prime factors i just need to factorize this in terms of 2 and 3 and then see what is left if anything is left having something more besides 2 and 3 so that's a negative one case and then i can just have this a and b checks on the numbers of 2s and 3s i would have extracted to get my 2 and 3 case working also covered okay so now let us look at the code part now how to understand how will we do this very very simple what i'll do over here is i'll take up first t then i have the input of t then i'll run a while loop on test cases then i have the variable n then i have a count of 3 uh, variable count of 2 variable starts with 0 then what i'll do is i'll run a while loop and what will this will say is till i feel n is greater than 0 and i feel n is divisible by 3 i'll divide it by 3 and i'll count those number of 3s then till i feel n is greater than 0 and it's divisible by 2 i'll count on 2 and i'll divide it by 2 so these two while loops are basically going to extract all the 2s and all the 3s from this number n now after i do this if i feel that n is greater than 1 that means it has something besides a uh, 2 and 3 also maybe a factor 5 or 7 something other i don't know but definitely that's a factor that besides 2 and 3 so i know that's a case of negative 1 or i feel that count of 2 which was actually a right a is actually greater than count of 3 so negative 1 case so any of these two cases are fulfilled i'll print a negative 1 else i know answer is possible what is that answer count of 3s that is the operation 2 plus what's the difference of 2s i want to cover count of 3 minus count of 2s so this is my whole problem now what would be the time complexity in this this is very very important to understand it's again mathematics if you observe over here we are basically removing all the factors of 3 from this number right so that means we are running this loop in log base 3 of n by log base 3 of n because if n has like some uh let's say x power of 3 coming in it then 3 power x can be written as n and if you take log base 3 on both sides by mathematics you will actually figure out that x or that power of 3 of s whatever is the then number is actually log base 3 of n so that means this while loop runs in that pretty much order similarly this while loop is going to run almost in log base 2 n order again same logic you were dividing it over here by 3 now you divide it by 2 so log base 2 order in terms of n is also going to be this while loop running order and then everything pretty much after this is constant you have simple checks over here which means i have uh, like the time complexity now in the log base 3n versus log base 2n log base 2n is preferably higher but i mean when we talk about log uh, terms in terms of time complexity we don't really bother about the bases that is specifically in this case when we have base 2 and then we have base 3 so it's not a very high difference so maybe we can like just report the time complexity in logarithmic format that can be log base 2 preferably that would be fine it's no bother worry about what is bigger in this range the answer main thing lies over here is that since we are reaching a log power in terms of time complexity we are going to get an accepted solution because our logic is right and the time complexity is actually very fast because if you plug in 10 power 9 order in log base 2 even you will get something like 30 operations something like that 30 35 operations and if you plug in for log base 3 you will still be like less than 50 to 60 operations which is very good because we wanted something like 10 power 3 order and we have pretty much reached up an order that's less than 100 so log is what is coming in this time complexity and this is hinting us to the expected time complexity discussion also where we discuss that okay by experience it makes sense for such high powers of n you do want to create a solution that looks in logarithmic terms and that is what we are getting over here all right so this is what we can write now if i take this for specifically for log base 2 n then i can report this as o of almost 30 operations for plugging in n as 10 raised to 9 and what about space complexity space is pretty much constant i'm not using any extra space to get my answer simple uh, variables that i'm taking extra so that is all good to go okay so this is where we can end the problem i hope you like the video thank you for watching